What's up guys? So part two of our vlog series, we are going to be reframing this wall back here. Not reframing, that's actually a poor choice of words. We are going to be um, fixing the existing framing that's here. Because we have termite damage, water damage, etc, etc. So we want to make sure that we don't have problems down the line now that we're going back and installing a new tub and shower with nice tile. So anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so first up, what we're gonna do is, what we're gonna do is pretty much replace this exactly the way it was. So I've already pre-cut <coughs> the jack stud or trimmer stud, um, depending on your location is what they call it. Um, these studs here, this jack stud, and this top plate here. So what we're gonna do is just basically disassemble this um, surgically without damaging anything else, especially the exterior part of the house and the brick. Um, and then we're gonna put everything right back. Um, this is a load bearing wall. So, you know, this is our own home. Normally, if this was a client's home, we'd have a structural engineer come in here, um, tell us exactly what to do, but since it is our own home, it falls under the homeowner exception. Um, so we're pretty much just going to replace it exactly the way it was. This is not structural engineer advice. Um, if you have something like this going on in your home or a client's home, stop what you're doing, get a structural engineer to come in, and spec out the way it needs to be repaired. Just a little disclaimer for you guys. Um, try at your own risk. So, first thing we're going to do is remove the top plate, remove these, or whatever you want to call this, uh, remove these studs, and go from there. Okay guys, so the first step we did here was unscrew the top plate here below the window to be able to access the two cripple studs below the uh, top plate there. And then we used the combination of the multi-tool and the pry bar to remove the studs from the wall. Now the problem that we encountered here was that they were nailed from the outside with the sheeting so it was a little challenging to ensure that we didn't damage the sheeting. But once we got through all that it was pretty easy. So my strategy here was to use the multi-tool to cut the stud in 12 inch segments. Uh, this made it easier to remove as there weren't as many nails holding it into the exterior sheeting. Um, that helped stop with any of the extra damage that we were causing by pulling it off the opposite way than what it was meant to be. All in all, uh, it came out pretty good and it wasn't as hard as we thought it was going to be. So for this next step, we are going to just be replacing all the studs exactly how it was before. We already pre-cut everything to the correct measurements. So now it's just pretty much we're going to work from the work from the bottom and work our way up. I guess I should I can mention what we're using. We don't have a nail gun. So what we are using is GRK fasteners. This is the, um, they're two and a half inches long, and um, I will be screwing the wood in to secure it. So, is, does this come with a bit?
All right, so now that all the framing has been replaced, the next step we are going to do is fill in all of these gaps and cracks here with the foam. So you might be wondering like, oh, well, there's a huge gap here to the window. When we, in the later steps, you'll see when we put in our, when we put our foam board here, um, the foam board is a half inch. We're probably going to double up on the foam board on these spots so that the foam comes to the sill and we can waterproof the foam to, not the sill, the, um, the window. So we're gonna try, we're gonna bring it out to overlap this window frame. You'll see. Whoa. Okay. So this is the foam that expands only up to one inch. So if it expands and it's past where you need it to be, once it dries, you just go back with a knife or what I really like to use is the multi-tool. You just cut it away, make it nice and neat, and you're good to go. I'd rather have more than I need and it be overflowing than less than I need. So I can see this. I'm going to add more up here. Okay, we're all done with the framing. We've even added in some spray foam around the window. So just a quick recap. We had gnarly studs here before that were that had water damage and termite damage. So we removed everything from the header down. Um, we left the jack stud? King stud. King stud. We left the king stud. The king stud is the one that goes to the top plate. So this is the jack stud. This one. Um, that goes to the header. So we remove both of those, we remove the sill, we removed these studs, and we replaced everything entirely, all brand new. Um, and basically our thought process behind this was we're going to be replacing everything, putting in a new tub, putting in a new tile assembly. We want to make sure that it lasts. This is an exterior wall, so it was a little bit worrisome. I know Chris mentioned a disclaimer earlier, but um, this is our home. If this was a client's home or if you have no idea what it is you're doing, don't listen to us. Um, I would definitely consult with a professional first because we are not professional framers whatsoever. It's always best case scenario just to consult with somebody and then probably just replace everything. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Um, okay, so then the next thing we did was we filled in the gaps and the cracks around the window with the spray foam. Now, why we didn't, we didn't think, this is something that we didn't think about beforehand. What we should have done was extended this framing up a little bit so that it came to the bottom of the window. Um, but we were just so dead set on replacing it exactly the way it is that we cut everything exactly the way it was. The only thing we added was these two um, pieces here. And that was really just to secure this top, um, this sill, Piece. I don't even know what you call it this stud because obviously we don't have access to nail it from the outside like they did when they originally built this so we added this in to make it way more secure um, what was I saying oh so yeah we didn't do that so what you will see in later videos which I will link below you'll see how we are going to actually use extra foam we're going to just we're going to install our foam board and then we're gonna go back over it with another layer just around the windowsill to make up the height difference. This way our waterproofing comes, I wanna use something like as an example. Like if this was the waterproof foam board, like it comes right to here, the uh, window frame, and then we run our sealant here. This way it's completely waterproof. Water isn't gonna get behind here. It's not going to touch any of this organic material here, this wood, nothing, not get behind the wall. Um, windows and niches are extremely important when it comes to waterproofing. You have to make sure that you're doing it very well to the best of your ability. That's it for this video. The next steps is going to be this wonderful area here. This, the plumbing in this house is galvanized, so it's going to be a fun time moving this over because we're converting this to a bathtub. So 
that'll be in the next video. Stay tuned. Um, leave your comments and your, you know, anything that you have to say below. We are glad to hear your input. Um, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.